I'm here today to wrap up my July reading. So I um, got through 10 books in July and um, I was wrapping up the book two prize reading for round three, which was nonfiction. So I, <laughs> I've already made extensive vlogs for these four books. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail here about them. Um, I listened to Underland by Robert McFarlane on audio. Uh, this book was um, had some wonderful points in it, had some interesting information and was overall fairly well written. Um, I gave it three stars, I believe, and I did enjoy it in parts, but it as a whole cohesive book, it just didn't really work for me. So uh, again, I will link all those vlogs down below so you can have a look at them if you're more interested in hearing in-depth thoughts. Um, I also read Sea People by Christina Thompson. Um, this was um, my number three in the rankings and I did really enjoy this. I thought it had a good, you know, cohesive feel to it and a lot of interesting information, especially about indigenous um, ways of knowing and indigenous knowledge and how that was passed on um, and how it contrasted with Western ways of learning and interpreting things like navigation. Um, yeah. And then I also finished Solitary by Albert Woodfox which documents his um, incarceration for um, decades for a, a murder that he did not commit. And this is his story. This is his autobiography. Um, very important, very interesting. Um, there were a few parts for me that were um, not really necessary, I felt, to be included. Um, but... I think it's a really important book if you're interested in learning about systemic racism and how it manifests itself in the prison system and in the justice system in the United States. And then the last book I finished for the Book Two Prize was Say Nothing by Patrick Radden Keefe. And this is um, telling the story of the troubles in Ireland through four key figures that he identified um, in the movement. And um, again, I, I was not a huge fan of this um, for the way in which he told the story. So for me, um, the level of violence that he shared was too much. Um, but uh, I was obviously in the minority on my opinion of this book. And so before I get into the other books I read in July, I'll just comment a little bit on the results from uh, round three. And so in my group, nonfiction group A, Say Nothing, Solitary, and Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow were the three books that went forward into the next round. And I have to say I was rather disappointed um, in the results of that. I just think that... Um, the other two books that I had put in my top three, which was The Yellow House and Say Nothing, and sorry, and See People, were more appealing to a broader audience than um, the other books, than Solitary and Say Nothing. Um, so, you know, that was the reasoning for me um, in putting them where I did, and um, the other judges didn't agree with me. All right, so on to some other books that I read this month my my of my own choosing so i read remarkable creatures by tracy chevalier and this is part of my 12 authors that i want to read in 2020 um and this was a delight i really really enjoyed this book um this tells the story of mary anning so this is um fiction but using real people who were alive um at this period she um, was living on the coast of England and discovering dinosaurs she was instrumental in discovering some new dinosaurs that had not been found yet and she just had this natural inclination for finding fossils and her relationship with Elizabeth Philpott um, was 
really, really um, important to and pivotal to the plot of this book. And I really enjoyed um, the perspective. I really enjoyed um, the way the, to the story was told, the setting, the characters. I thought um, Tracy Chevalier really told this story with so much warmth and so much um, depth as to give the characters you know, real personalities that were so round and they weren't, they weren't perfect and, but they had these passions and, you know, it, it did remind me, it is, um, these women were contemporary with Jane Austen and Jane Austen is mentioned in here. And I love how she was able to, you know, piggyback on a lot of feelings that you would get from a Jane Austen book. Um, but you know, keep it focused in an area where women were just not given the space. They weren't given the space to have interests, you know, that were not about getting married and having children and falling in love, that were about something else. And there, those interests are in here too. And you see them from, I think, a really interesting perspective. You know, there's a lot of talk about spinsters and what being a spinster means and when that you know, when you resign yourself to being a spinster, when you give up hope of ever finding a partner um, and and what that gives you in terms of freedom and what that gives you in terms of loneliness is all kind of explored in here. So it's a lovely book. I really would recommend this one. So I actually got to continuing on to my 1970s project this month and I read Heat and Dust by Ruth Prower Jabvala. And um, I'm going to link in the description box down below a um, talk given by a scholar uh, about this book. And, you know, I thought there was a lot in here, a lot in here to unpack and think about. Ruth Prower Javbala herself has a really interesting history. She was um, born in Germany of Polish descent. And she moved around a lot in her life, lived in a lot of different places and never really felt at home, never really felt like she belonged anywhere. She married um, um, C.S.H. Javala um, and lived in India for 20 years. And so, you know, this book is written from her experience of being in England um, and it follows two characters. So you have a present day, so present day at this point being the 1970s, um, descendant of um, some of the people in the 1920s version of the story. So what you're seeing is India from a 1920s colonial perspective and a 1970s perspective. And both of these women's lives parallel each other in a very interesting way. Um, I... I find stories about the colonial experience to be very helpful for me in dissecting my own participation in the post-colonial world, in what the remnants of colonialism. And um, I think that also what Jabala does in this book is follow some really interesting lines of view in terms of women's agency in the 1920s versus the 1970s. And that's the type of information that I'm finding is coming up in this first round of reading that I'm doing for my 1970s project, where I'm seeing themes that are repeated by women writers in their work. And I'm going to talk more about that when I finish the first round of the project and go into depth about the books that I've read. But if you're interested in um, colonialism in and India and those kind of, you know, wrought relationships of um, the way the British Empire imposed its, its way of being on India, um, I think you know, this is definitely worth reading. It also does a great job, I think, of setting the scene of India. Obviously, it's called Heat and Dust, so it's evo evoking a lot of feelings of um, the, the, the atmosphere of India, and especially being a foreigner and coming into a country that you did not grow up in, and so you're not used to the climate, you're not used to the food, you're not used to anything. It really explains a lot of those things um, in a way that I found really, really um, compelling and um, with a lot of 
space for depth to go inside and like read between the lines and see more and learn more. So I did enjoy this one. For the um, Reading Rush, I read uh, The Reader by Baron Hutchlink, and this is a translated work translated from the German by Carol Brown Janeway. Um, I will link, there'll be a lot of links in the description box today, I will link the um, vlog that I did about uh, this, or while I was reading this book for the Reading Rush in the description box below. Um, I really enjoyed this, I thought it was very well written, uh, it f follows the film quite well, and um, I will probably be doing a um, The Movie Made Me Read It uh, video about this um, later on, but, you know, it's got a great feel to it, um, and it explores issues of post-World uh, War II Germany that um, I think are important issues to explore um, and certainly there is a relationship between a teenage boy and an older woman in here a sexual relationship so I know that that's problematic for some people and um, for me I think that uh, the layers through the writing um, were handled it in, in the best possible way so obviously as a mother to young boys um, I would never want a situation like that for my sons um, as their sexual awakening, but um, you know, those things don't always go as planned, and so uh, it, it's a really interesting story. I think it has a lot in it that you can get out of it um, in learning about that time period and then learning about generations and how they reconcile um, things that are going on in their prime. I also read Pride and Prejudice on audio for the um, Jane Austen July, and I enjoyed it immensely. I think, you know, for me, never having read Jane Austen before, um, I was a little bit nervous that her style or something about the writing would um, not intrigue me and not capture me. I think that's always um, how I approach classics. I'm a little bit worried that I won't enjoy the source material for the films because I've obviously seen both the BBC adaptation and the um, Karen Knightley film for Pride and Prejudice, so I knew the story quite well, and I enjoyed it very much. I really love um, the way Jane Austen constructed her stories, and one of the ways I love them is how she left things out. She kind of was able to describe interactions between the characters and then just say this, this little thing happened and then not give you the dialogue that goes on in that time. And I really appreciate that from a writer because I think it gives you space to to infer something and to reflect on something happening without having it all spelled out for you because often you don't need it all spelled out you just need to know that that some little event occurred and then you can move on to a, a more interesting point to meet up with the characters again and I really appreciated how Jane Austen did that um I yeah I think that um for me having re reading the book after seeing the films, I felt that, you know, all the adaptations I've seen have done a great job of, you know, conveying the, the main points of the story, the most important parts of the story um, for everyone. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a lovely, lovely listen. And um, I will probably endeavor to um, listen to another one. Um, before the end of the year, uh, I think. We'll see, but um, I definitely enjoyed the experience of listening and I, I wouldn't put it past that I would read them in a physical book form, but they are wonderful to listen to if you have a good narrator. So um, I, yeah, I think that might be the way I can see my Jane Austen in the future. We'll see. The last book I finished in July was By Love Possessed by Lorna Goodison, and this is a collection of short stories. Great collection. Um, so many wonderful stories in here. Um, this is about uh, characters from the Jamaican diaspora 
and they are mostly set in Jamaica. I would say there's maybe one or two that are not set in Jamaica and all the rest are. Um, there are a variety of styles of stories. Um, some of them, a lot of them are about relationships, love relationships, um, um, between men and women. Um, there's also one that is about a young boy who's living on the street. And I found that one to be one of the ones that stood out the most for me. Um, she really did a great job of, of covering a lot of different aspects of life in Jamaica, um, with a lot of different perspectives and, um, while still really, you know, she has a style that I find um, comes through in a lot of these stories. So it was a great collection. Um, Lorna Goodison is um, born in Jamaica, immigrated to Canada. Um, she lives both in Canada and the United States. I believe she teaches at the University of Michigan. And she's written a memoir about her mother's life, which is a called From Harvey River, and that is also on my TBR, so I'll be reading that in the future. Um, I do really like her way of writing, and I would recommend this um, as a short story collection. It's um, got a lot of really good ones in it. So that was my July reading for 2020, and um, I got a little nervous near the end of the month, I have to say, when I had uh, a lot of big books left over for the BookTube Prize but um, I managed to get through them and um, the Reading Rush really helped with that in terms of motivating me to read more and read faster. So thank you very much for tuning in today and I'll be back again soon with another video.